Hello and welcome to the Capture the Flag video series. In this video, we will look at solving questions from the Magnet Virtual Summit 2021 Capture the Flag contest. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I can reach the boss level. If you want to follow along, see the description section below for the link to the MVS 2021 CTF event website where you can register. Then you will get an email with links to download the images. In this video, we will focus on the group of questions called IOS. So you will need the MVS 2021 IOS.zip file. Question 12. What falls but never hits the ground? What was the temperature in Burlington on March 3rd at approximately 3 p.m.? This took me a while, but after not having any answers looking at the weather app, I decided to take a look at the snapshots again, but this time of the Apple Maps application. So I basically CD'd into mobile containers, data application, 1BF7 tab, library, splashboard, snapshots, and then scene ID, colon, com.apple.maps, and then hit tab. I did a tree to take a look at what files are in here. There's basically four KTX files. And KTX files are generally not recognized by image viewers. So we're going to have to use a Python script written by Yogesh Katari to do the conversion to PNG. And if you want to download that script, you can see the description below for links to that script. I'm going to type in Python 3. And then my location of the script, which is slash MNT HD MVS 2021 dash CTF slash scripts slash IOS underscore KTX to PNG dot PY. And then the 79CC hit the tab. So that's the first file. I'm going to convert the second file. Similar thing, Python 3 the location for the iOS KTX to png.python script. And then this time I'm going to do 8421 tab. So now let's go ahead and um, use mate open of 79cc tab and then dot png. And what this is, is looks like it's from the map application and it, uh, it was a search for Wendy's. And in this particular case, if you notice here, there is the temperature listed right there. Question 13, what's your number? What was the order number for the Chick-fil-A mobile order? So we saw this earlier in the uh, mail messages where we had the receipt. So let's go back and CD into mobile, library, mail, message data, and then 41. And this time, uh, we're going to go ahead and grep for the phrase order number. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe it into said to get rid of the leading white space. So we're going to do said single quote S slash open bracket space backslash T close bracket star slash slash G and then ending the single quote. So what this is going to do is that it's going to substitute anything that is a space or tab on that line and just get rid of it. And so once we do that, it comes back and has the line with the order number and there is our answer. Question 14. Chicken on a Sunday? Okay, so we know Eli likes Chick-fil-A. What two other chain fast food restaurants were visited? Well, since we've already seen emails and videos of Eli's visits to Chipotle from questions 9 and 13, we know for sure that's one of his favorite restaurants. And question 12 showed Wendy's as a search, so that's probably a restaurant of interest for Eli as well. But just to get a little more confirmation, let's look for other artifacts to point to Wendy's. So because we're running iOS 14, I know that the maps info is in map sync. So let's do a find dot dash type F 
dash iname map sync star. This comes back with the location of the map sync file. So let's do SQLite browser of mobile containers shared app group B0B5 tab maps and then map sync underscore 0 .0 0.0.1. As we look through this database, the table of interest is called Z history item. And then if we actually look at the column for Z route request storage in items three and item four, there are blobs that contain a lot of info. And since it's hard to read here, let's go ahead and export them to a slash temp as blob three and blob four. So we can look at them uh, on the command line. Once we have them uh, exported, we can do a strings on slash temp blob three. And then what we want to do is pipe that through sort and then dash u for unique. So it's only going to count each occurrence once. And what we see here is a lot of mentions of the country cart deli, which I am not sure if that's a chain restaurant or not. So let's take a look at the blob4 file as well. So let's do a strings of slash temp blob4. Again, let's pipe it through sort and then dash u to make sure it only gives us any unique occurrences. And here we can see a lot of references to Wendy's. It looks like a screw found in this Wendy's chili. There's a bunch of Wendy's in the address. Uh, there is more, um, looks like reviews of Wendy's from different people a help wanted for Wendy's and so forth. So I'm pretty confident that Wendy's is Eli's other favorite chain restaurant. Question 15, D for fit target. On which day were the most steps recorded with an Apple iWatch? Once again, it seems like it's a uh, health data. So let's take a look at the health database. We do SQLite browser, mobile, library, health, health db underscore secure dot SQLite. And the first table I want to look at is the unit strings. And it looks like row number five is the unit that is S for steps. Next, we look at the quality samples table where it contains the raw data. And let's go ahead and add a filter to the original unit column with the value of five so that it's only going to look at uh, things that are from steps. And then I'm going to sort the original quantity column. And we see the top of the list here, ID numbers 1536, 5035, 5036, and 8168 all give uh, seems like 300 steps. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the samples table around those data IDs and just eyeballing the activity around the day of 8168 versus 1536 or uh, 5035. It looks like the days around 8168 uh, seems to be the most heavy. So I really wanted to, I guess you can go ahead and actually add up all those numbers. I go to the samples table and under data ID of 8168, I go ahead and grab the start date and I plug that into the epochconverter.com slash core data to get the human readable timestamp and it comes back to March 3rd, 2021. Question 16, foul language. Who has mentioned outside the Chick-fil-A? So recalling the videos that we looked at from when we looked at the mobile media DSIM 100 Apple folder, let's go ahead and play IMG underscore 0003.mov. And you can definitely hear somebody's name being mentioned in the audio. So I'm gonna do mate dash open mobile media D 
dsim 100 apple slash img underscore 0003 dot mov. Jonathan. Question 17. Give me a signal. What was the link sent to Eli on signal? So to answer this question, we will need to download the SQL cipher tool so that we can decode the encrypted signal database. The link to do that is below. So go ahead and download the source and then you will need to compile the code. All right, so first thing we need to look at is the keychain plist that came with the extraction. And uh, there's some very smart folks out there at github.com slash magpole. And they've figured out how you need to locate the key which encodes the database. So the key that we're looking for is called GRDB database cipher key spec. You need to encode that into base64. So we're going to go ahead and do echo dash n GRDB database cipher key spec. And make sure that the cases are the same because the case matters. And then we're going to pipe that into base64 program. And the output is R1, J, E, Q, etc. So now let's go ahead and CD into dot dot slash MVS 2021 IOS slash 2021. I'm going to hit the tab. And let's do a backslash LS dash capital F. So we see the keychain list amongst other things. So we're going to go ahead and VI that keychain P list. So let's search for R1JEQ. Okay, so once we've found it, what we need to do is go down a little bit and look for the associated V underscore data key. And once we found that, we can see that the data of the data key is APZJ blah, blah, blah. Let's copy that data. And then what we need to do is base64 decode it and then convert it back into hex. So let's go ahead and echo dash n. I'm going to paste in APZJ blah, blah, blah. I'm going to pipe that into base64 dash d to decode it. And then we're going to pipe that into XXD to convert it into hexadecimal. I'm going to use the dash P and dash C with the 48. Dash P is the output in postscript, or basically plain hex dump. And dash C with the number means we're going to format the so many columns of the output. Next, let's find the signals database. And then do a find dot dash type f dash i name signal dot sqlite. And we get back something that looks like f4dd for the start of the UUID for signal app. And instead of actually modifying them here, let's go ahead and copy them into a folder in slash temp called test. All right, so now we can use the program. Uh, SQL cipher and mines in the path slash MNT HD MVS 2021 CTF slash scripts slash SQL cipher slash SQL cipher. And we want to read in the copy of that signal database called slash temp that's slash temp dot signal dot SQLite. So the first thing we're going to do is to basically give it the key that we had copied earlier. So we type pragma key equals double quote x for hex single quote and paste in the UU decoded key of 029CE etc. Ending the single quote and then ending the double quote and then semicolon for the next line which is pragma, and then we need to set the uh, header size. So we're going to say cipher underscore plain text underscore header underscore size equals 32. We take a look at the uh, dot tables. If we look at the dot database, it actually still has the right database, so that's good. And now we can do a 
attach database single quote signal underscore decrypted dot sq light single quote as signal decrypted key single quote single quote semicolon and then we do select sql cipher underscore export parentheses single quote signal underscore decrypted single quote and parentheses semicolon detach database signal underscore decrypted semicolon and then dot exit so what we did just did there was that we gave the database the key that we decoded from the P list and then we we exported out the decrypted database into a file called signal underscore decrypted dot sqlite so let's go ahead and run sqlite browser on that file as signal underscore decrypted dot sqlite so what we can see is looking under the table named index underscore text and under the column called FTS indexable content we see ID number six with the text that looks like a URL except it doesn't have punctuation marks because it got stripped out so we, we can go ahead and add those back and get the get results of https colon slash slash vm dot tiktok dot com slash z m e j t u five m g question 18 peekaboo what app was used to let Eli know it's burrito time? Well, in question 11, we had already seen the videos from Snapchat. So let's go ahead and CD the mobile slash containers slash data slash application slash 4BE5 hit tab and slash library slash persistent slash SC media. And if we use mate dash open and give it cm underscore chat and just hit tab and then zy5eh hit tab you should have the movie that plays the words burrito time and we know that's from the snapchat application question 19 the epitome of health what time did the health database last sync so let's go ahead and use sqlite browser to go back into mobile library health and look at the health db.sqlite. So we look at the table called cloud underscore sync underscore stores. And in the column called last sync, we see a particular number. We go ahead and copy that timestamp into the epoch converter slash core data. And we will get our answer there. Question 20. You can't beat encryption, right? What user was Eli texting on Wicker? So I have to admit, this one uh, got me beat. I just couldn't figure out how to do it in the Linux environment. I believe I'm just missing some uh, information to, on how to decode the encrypted database. Much like the signal database, there is probably something specific and different with Wicker. I just couldn't figure it out. So I had to basically cheat and run it on a Windows machine with Axiom to get the answer. But I'm gonna keep working on this and hopefully make a updated post on a Linux solution. Question 21. Let us insert a sandwich pun here. Eli was telling his friend about a sandwich he got. When was the message sent where he said he got the sandwich. So after digging into mail messages and various chat apps, I ended up looking at the uh, Snapchat application. So let's go ahead and CD into mobile containers, data application, 4BE5 tab, 
documents users underscore scoped c410 tab slash a royal and if we do a backslash ls dash f to see the files we see that the arroyo.db is the file of interest so let's do sqlite browser of arroyo.db if we look at the table of interest which is conversation underscore message you see client message id 13 and in the blob message content uh, we can see there's a message that says i got a spicy chicken sandwich not as good as a chick-fil-a though and if we take a look at the creation timestamp we can go ahead and copy and paste that into the epoch converter and that timestamp converts to march 4th of 2021 question 22 tick tock clock when was the tick tock sent in signal posted so going back to question 17 and clicking on the link that brings me to the TikTok video. And so just a warning, you might want to mute your computer or this can get really annoying really fast. If you look at the posting, there is a date of 2020 in December 8th associated with the upload. But the question asks for the timestamp as well. So I did a view page source. And then I did a select all and pasted it into a VI session so that it's easier for me to do my searching. So looking for the phrase timestamp, I came across a timestamp of uh, 16, 14, 57, 70, 95, which converts to March 2nd, 2021. And so that does not jive with the 2020 December date uh, on the TikTok website so then i decided to just search for the word time and there is a ton of occurrences but i did come across a field called create time and with the data of 1607 45 1208 and using the epoch converter that gives us the answer of december 8th 2020 at 18 13 28 all right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we try to use only the Kane Linux Forensics Distro and the internet to find the answers for the Magnet Virtual Summit 2021 Capture the Flag Contest iPhone portion. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.